This is how I be- Hey! Listen! What? The world doesn't revolve around me and I'm a self-centered idiot? Ugh. Fine. This is how Link beat Pokemon Infinite Fusion with Legend of Zelda fusions only. Link's journey begins with Navi leading him to a portal into this strange new world as her little revenge for never listening to her. Stripped of his gear because weapons are illegal and a way back to his world, he has to play by Navi's rules to get her to send him back to his home. He takes a moment to look at all of the creatures on the table and settles on Laruna, a worthy partner for the hero of- Listen. Hey, Navi, what gives? While Link is a little startled by what just happened, instead of getting Laruna, he was shocked to see that he got Hone Jr., which is apparently, well, himself, and an extra starter in an odd hoot Deku scrub named Deku Bro 2 since he's a newbie at this Pokemon thing. With his two starter Pokemon, he began to battle Navi so he could learn how to use his new equipment. The battle was relatively simple since Link picked up quickly on type advantages. He recognized that Deku Bro 2 has Absorb, which would be super effective against Navi's Mudkid, so he spammed that move and won the battle. Much like he is used to, this old man sent him on a quest to acquire a parcel. And so, our hero's journey be- Hey! Listen! What do you want? I'm trying to do a commentary here! Listen! Fine, fine. Here are the rules Navi has in place for Link. Like in Breath of the Wild, Link's equipment can be swapped mid-battle and they can also break. So, while he's able to switch out Pokemon freely, if they faint, he can't use them anymore. Navi's balancing for being able to freely swap is that he cannot use Pokemon past the level of the lowest level the gym leader has, along with the fact that he cannot use items to repair damage to his Pokemon in battle. After each gym battle, Link can submit the premium Wonder Trade tickets that he gets to take Pokemon from Navi's curated list of Zelda-themed Pokemon, which are ordered from lowest to highest base stat totals. Finally, in order for Link to return to his homeworld, he must acquire the legendary Pokemon with the Ocarina from Navi. Alright, can I continue with my commentary now? Hey! Cool, thanks. With Link completing his first quest, he headed onwards in his journey, mainly amazed that he can run forever for the first time in a while. With this newfound power, he headed straight into Hey! No. Get back here. That's the path to the final part of your journey. This isn't some something about or totally legit Zelda speedrun video that you're in this time. Setting Link back on track, he makes his way into Viridian Forest. He thought the forest could be this world's version of the Lost Woods, so he searched for his master store to no avail, but he did find something. The exit. Upon entering the city, he went straight to the boss of the Peter City area, Brock. He opened with Curate, so Link, using his newfound knowledge of type advantages, used Deku Scrub 2's Absorb and took it out in a few hits. Up next was Rysor, who wouldn't be affected by Deku Bro 2's Absorbs, so after getting too low, Link switched into Young Link to Sword Stance and Fury Cutter it for the faint. After winning the battle and excitedly taking his first gym badge, Link went to claim his trade ticket right away. With this first ticket, he was able to get... After a short bit of PTSD, Link was tasked with stopping some evildoers in a cave called Mount Moon. He ran into the occasional monster every now and then, which he was used to, but it was so strange to him that people would just fight with these little creatures and then be defeated. As he found out, the evildoers were experimenting with something called Triple Fusion, which he didn't really know why it was bad, but he defeated them nonetheless and headed out of the cave. As he entered the city, he began to make his way towards the gym. Also, I'm starting to think he just wants to know what Pokemon he'll get next. Regardless, after getting through to the trainers, he arrives face to face with Misty, the boss of the Cerulean City area. She opened with Hitmonpuff against Deku Bro 2. With a couple of pecks, the Hitmonpuff got low, but Link noticed it used Jump Kick, so he used the opportunity to switch it into Yahaha to take it out from Recoil. Ryotic was her final Pokemon, but Deku Bro 2 was too low to switch in, so Link stuck with Yahaha. For some reason, the Ryotic copycatted the jump kick and took a bunch of recoil, which let Yahaha easily finish the battle with a few rock throws. With another badge handy and looking at Yahaha, he realized the badges are kinda lame and found a greater appreciation for Hestu's gift. Hey! Oh. Uh. Hmm. That must have been Navi. Uh, hope you're happy with that, buddy. More importantly, the wind granted him a new piece of equipment in an odd school Deku scrub named Deku Bro 3, which he promptly added to his team to start his trek towards the man no- Uh, do you hear that? What is that no- Oh. She opened with Raul Kuno against Young Link, 
A few Sword Stance boosted Shadow Sneaks was able to easily take it down. The Daiduo came out next, so Link kept Young Link in since it had Sword Stance boost still. Same thought process with the Polylith, who took a couple of Shadow Sneaks before going down. Mudbuzz was last, and although it was a bit close, Link successfully sweeped Navi's team with only Young Link. Okay. Now Link makes his way through the slew of trainers and the upcoming routes towards the man known as Bill. Link's confused why people would be so interested in fusing themselves with Pokemon. Like, why would anyone think that attaching meat to a piece of equipment like an arrow or something be a good idea? Anyway, by helping Bill, Link now has access to the SSN. I gotta hand it to Link. Even in unfamiliar territory, he looks like he knows exactly where he's going, because it didn't take him too long to arrive in Vermilion City. Board the SSN, Link was impressed by the sheer size of it, but still thinks that the King of Red Lions was a better ship. While exploring this massive ship, though, Navi seemed to have found him and came by to battle Link. She opened with Sysaur against Deku Bro 2. With a few acids and an extra sensory though, Sysaur was defeated. Empahoot came out next, so Link responded with Deku Bro 3. Paralyzed it and took it out with a few nightshades. Butterfree was up next, so Link used Yahaha to finish it off with a single rock throw. Her last Pokemon was Marshbuzz, so Link sent in Young Link, who wasn't able to do much, so he had to swap it out into Yahaha. Yahaha, using its Will-O-Wisp and a single dig, was able to take it out and finish the battle. With this, Link continued to explore the ship and found a guy throwing up and cautiously helped him. You never know these days. You can help someone and suddenly they might take their banana-obsessed cult beliefs and attack you. Anyways, after the literal swordsman took some lessons on how to cut for some reason, he was able to access the Vermilion City area's boss. But not before going through an annoying puzzle. Link thought it definitely wasn't the dumbest puzzle he had to do, but it's somewhere up there. Eventually though, he found the switches and challenged the Vermilion City boss, Lieutenant Surge. He opened with Quaitar against Yahaha. It took a single dig before switching into Gralge, which went down to two rock throws. But Yahaha got too low at this point, so Link swapped into Decabro 3 to the incoming Quaitar. Decabro 3 was able to take it out with a single Nightshade. Horiazard was his last Pokemon, so it was all up to Decabro 2. Weirdly enough, its only moves were Magnet Rise, Recover, Agility, and Scary Face. So, while Link waited for its Recover PP to run out, he had a few thoughts like, why did the guy with the most annoying Pokemon make the most annoying puzzle? And boy, if only I had my sword right now. Eventually though, he was awarded with, uh, well, another Hestu's gift. Anywho, let's check out what Pokemon you'll be getting this time. For the first ticket, Link gets a... Geolery, the Rock Octorok. Pretty neat, right? And the second one is... Oddsire, another Deku scrub. This one's named Deku Bro 1. The game's words echo in Link's head. Well, guess you're stuck with 6, and there's not much you can do about that, huh? Oh, uh, you made it to Rock Tunnel while I was goofing around? Good for you. It was, uh, pretty uneventful for him. Really nothing life-threatening like some of the other caves he's been in, though he did find a familiar face he could always count on for help and friendly advice. It's dangerous to go alone, take this! As Link looked at the weapon, he thought, I've never seen a sword of quite that shape or size. Oh god, that's not a sword, it's your in disguise. Well, that was weird, but whatever, there is no time to lose. Link's arrived at Lavender Town. It was a bit of a spooky place, but while he was sightseeing at this old-looking tower, Navi wanted to try and ruin some of his equipment. She opened up with Hanbok, so Link used Yahaha to Will-O-Wisp it and Hex it to faint it. Next up was Kektu, so he sent in Rock Octorok to one-shot it with a Smackdown. Marshbuzz came out next and also got one-shot with a Bulldoze. Togashir came out next and Dragon Raged Rock Octorok, forcing Link to switch into Decabro 2, who got taken out from a dual chop. This left Link to decide to use Young Link to Sword Stance and repeatedly use Fury Cutter to finish the battle. After the battle, Link and Navi found out what the evildoers were up to, and, as per usual, Navi told Link he should go to Celadon City. So he headed on his way out. Wait, aren't you gonna give Deku Bro 2 a proper send-off or anything? No? Your equipment breaks all the time? Man, that's kinda cold, but see you've arrived at Celadon City. Link ventures into the sewers and meets- hey, listen. Okay, yeah, I got it! No Erica simp jokes, jeez. After going on a quest that can only be described as The Legend of Zelda Two Swords Adventures and defeating all the bad guys in the sewers, Link is met face to face with the main villain of this world, Giovanni. 
He leads with Wii Raid against Deku Bro 3, who gets a burn off on it and takes it out with a few Nightshades. Thus Tom is up next, so Link uses Deku Bro 1, who is able to use a mix of Yawn and Giga Drain to stay healthy while taking it out. Last up is his Umtar, so Deku Bro 1 stays in to Yawn it before swapping into Young Link to start spamming Fury Cutter to finish the battle. With this win, Link grabs the Sylph Scope and heads over to challenge his temporary travel companion and the Celadon City boss, Erika. She opens with Hitmontoise against Deku Bro 1. After yawning and Giga Draining it, she opted to swap into Omasar. However, Link persisted with the Yawn Giga Drain tactic, which eventually took out the Omasar with ease. Hitmontoise came back out again to get finished off with a Giga Drain. Ardeon came out next, so after yawning it, Link sent in Young Link. It was able to Sword Stance at Fury Cutter to get some damage, but it survived a hit with 1 HP, so Link went back into Deku Bro 1 to yawn and spam Giga Drain again to earn Link his fourth gift. Alright buddy, it's ticket time, and the first is getting you... Oddlery, the Land Octorok, who he swaps with Deku Bro 3. And the other ticket is gonna be... Goedge, the Guardian Sword. This confuses Link, because his gear is illegal, yet this Pokemon is literally just a sword. Regardless, he made his way out of Celadon City and back into Pokemon Tower. He made his way up the tower and to the top, but not before being jumped by some ghost who didn't even phase Link, and Deku Bro 1 was easily able to take care of it. Link reached the top and as he approached, he thought, Old man, is that you? This is a place you can't survive with just your sword and your wits. It's dangerous to go alone, take this! Well, it's really kind of- Ah, that's your wrinkled ah. again. Oh no, it's just a pokey flute. It's certainly no ocarina, but it doesn't play too different from one it seems. He had a long trek through routes 12, 13, 14, and 15, but he eventually made it to Fuchsia City. From there, he immediately went to the- Uh, buddy, what, what are you trying to do? Are you looking for pots? No, you can't do that here! Oh, you got the strength HM. <clears throat> Now Link made his way into the gym to challenge the gym- Huh? Oh, uh, Guardian Sword is evolving into... Oh, Ancient Battle Axes. Neat. Alright, I think, hopefully now it's time for Link to battle the boss of the Fuchsia City area, Koga. He opens with Madrivis against Link's Rock Octorok. After setting up Stealth Rocks and firing off a few Rock Blasts, Link swapped it out for Young Link, who was able to set up three sword stances and finish it with a Night Slash. Next up was Slow Tom, who got one shot by a Night Slash as well. Young Link was able to get one more feint on the Metanor before getting taken out itself. Koga's final Pokemon was Duskrit, who after getting yawned by Deku Bro 1, was taken out in a couple of Giga Drains to finish the battle and earn him his fifth gift. Man, just cause you're used to your weapons breaking doesn't mean you should have unnecessary feints here. I'm just saying, I don't think the people are gonna like that. Oh, you're just gonna go right in with your tickets. And you got a Sheikah Slate? And your second one got you... Gopherig the Literal Divine Beast Va Naboris? What? With five gifts handy, more equipment options, and zero pots broken, Link makes his way to Saffron City. Oh. I think you're gonna need to show Team Rocket why they call you the hero of... Well, I'm not really sure which one you are, honestly. Link goes to the big building in the middle of the city, going around saving the various hostages, to make his way to the highest floor of the building, because realistically, evil bosses are always at the top or bottom of these sorts of things. Instead, though, he is met by Navi, though I suppose annoyance is a type of evil. Hey! She opens with Wheeler against Rock Octorok, who sets up a stealth rock before swapping into Vada Boris, who is able to take it out with a couple of Zen headbutts. Next is Lulith, so Link sends out Ancient Axes to take it out with a single stomping tantrum. Her next Pokemon is Mancruel, so Deku Bro 1 comes in to Earthquake it before having to switch into Yahaha to use Dig to finish it off. Her starter, Marsh Buzz, comes out, so Deku Bro 1 comes in to heal off of the Muddy Waters and Giga Drains to take it out. The last Pokemon is Venulum, which Link uses Land Octorok to take it out after spamming Aurora Beam. With this, Link and Navi join forces once again to take on the Team Rocket boss, Giovanni. Giovanni opened with King Rock and Typhlodo, while Link used Rock Octorok once again. Link tried to take out the Typhlodo with a Rock Blast, but got an unlucky 2 hit, leaving it at red HP and forcing him to swap into Yahaha, which he used to sack and get a better switch in for Ancient Axes. After a bit of back and forth, it was able to finish the Typhlodo with a Shadow Sneak, and living on a sliver of HP, it was able to take out the Whimsodon with a Dynamic Punch. 
Ryukazam was the other Pokemon on the field, so Vodnaboros came out to try and finish it. But Ryukazam ended up attacking Gomuku and finishing it off itself from the Gomuku's innards out. With this difficult battle out of the way for our hero with only one loss, it was time for him to actually take down the Fuchsia City boss, Sabrina. Sabrina led with her Glanair against Rock Octorok. So after having it set up Focus Energy, it used Rock Blast to get two sniper boosted feints on the Glanair and also on the incoming Luxress. That said, it got a little too low so Link used Ancient Axis to take on the Shakuno. It took a bit of time, but with enough Dynamic Punches and Shadow Punches, it fainted. The last Pokemon was Crookswine, which was a little dumb of Link to stay in on given it's a Dark type, but I guess he never goes punished, and was able to spam Stomping Tantrum to finish the battle and secure the next gift. It's that time again, you got three tickets. First of which is... Ganon the Deuceswine? Navi, how did you manage to pull this off? The next ticket you've got is... For another Divine Beast? Va Meadow the Gomori? The last of the three tickets is gonna give you... It's a Guardian Stalker! Link, run! Did you run so far you ended up in Goldenrod City? Oh, you took a non-spirit train over? Interesting. Uh, while Link was enjoying his little vacation in Goldenrod City, he picked up a dust stone that he used to evolve Ancient Axes into Guardian Shield. He really kitted out now, huh? With these changes to his team, Link headed back to Pallet Town and swam to Cinnabar Island. Wait, you do know you can ride your Pokemon. You know what? Whatever. Upon arriving in Cinnabar Island, Link heads for the old mansion where he was informed that the boss of Cinnabar Island was residing. Link walks around thinking about this fusion craze that's been going on and how cool it would be if he could do it back on his world. Eventually, he arrives at Blaine and stares him down menacingly until he goes back to his gym. Is there a reason why you don't talk? Like, I know I can read your mind, but it's kind of annoying having to commentate everything for you, you know? Still nothing. Well, fine then. Link arrived in front of the Cinnabar Island boss plane and challenged him to a battle. He led with Mismazing, which allowed Rock Octorok to set up stealth rocks before getting low and poisoned. This forced Link to switch into Ganon, who was able to set up three sword stances on it and finish it with an iron head. Shandifan came out next, surviving an earthquake with Sturdy before getting taken out by a Shadow Sneak. Genchu came out next and was taken out by an earthquake. But Ganon got too low, so Link sent in Land Octorok against the incoming Dustos. After seeing it had Hurricane, Link wanted to swap Land Octorok out, but nothing would survive the hit. So he used Giga Train, and luckily the Hurricane missed, securing him his seventh gift. Ticket time! The first one is turning into. Well, I don't think anyone's surprised at this point to see another Divine Beast in Varuda the Gofan. Next up to add to Link's possible arsenal is. Drifflery, the Sky Octorok. Three Deku Scrubs and three Octoroks, huh? This last ticket is. Well, there won't be any more Divine Beasts after Varudania the Gotile. From here, Link headed to the dock to find out that Team Rocket's final plans were being enacted on Mount Ember, so he followed them along the currents and eventually arrived at the mountain. He went in and easily cleared out all of the grunts leading up to the boss to finally... Wait, where are you going? Oh, Link actually went to reconfigure his equipment to better suit the battle. And now, our hero is ready to take on the legendaries at Volcuno put a stop to Team Rocket for good.
after the battle, Link went to challenge Moltres. Okay, like, what are you doing? Are you having fun here now or something? Come on, let's get to the final gym battle already. With the trainers cleared, it's time for our hero to face the Team Rocket boss once more. Giovanni opened with glaring, so Rock Octorok set up its stealth rocks and proceeded to stone edge it for an Oko. Next up was Vigonine, so Link switched into Guardian Shield to one-shot it with high horsepower. Next up was Whaleax, which Link switched to Land Octorok for since Guardian Shield is weak to water types. Land Octorok was able to easily spam Giga Drain to stay healthy and take it out. Milshio was next, so Guardian Shield came back out to also Oko it with high horsepower again. Shanagon Z came out last, and Guardian Shield stayed in to spam high horsepower and secure Link his 8th and final gig? Hang on, Navi, how come the layout isn't adding up? Alright Link, it's time for you to get your last set of Pokemon. For Link's third to last Pokemon, he's got... Probono, the Guardian Deity. Okay. His penultimate Pokemon in this journey is... Oh, it's um... It's Lucadoom, your fursona. Wow, Navi really did you in like that, huh? And the final Pokemon that Link can take on his journey is Kofavai. Your good buddy Midna. With all of his options laid out in front of him, Link took a bit to decide what the best team would be to bring him home. And after all of his careful planning, he made his way over to start his trek towards the Indigo Plateau. But first, Navi had to make sure he was prepared to take on the Elite Four. She opened with Lanyon against Guardian Deity who set up Stealth Rocks, three nasty plots, and took it out with a Psychic. She sent down Kofatar next, only to get quickly taken out by a Power Gem, and the Wishio went down the same way. After a couple of Psychics, Swambas also went down to Guardian Deity. The incoming Perpion was met by Fursona, who finished it in a couple of Aura Spheres. And her final Pokémon, Grand Poke, went down to a single Shadow Claw from Midna. With that, Link pressed forward to the last chapter in his journey. He went through the grassy areas, watery areas, cavey areas with boulders, and eventually made it out into the Indigo Plateau. Link's first opponent is Lorelei, the rock mini-boss who opens with Metadon. So Guardian Deity sets up its stealth rocks and switches out into Varudania, who takes it out with a quad effective high horsepower. Up next is Glarior, so Link sends in Ganon, who is able to easily take it out in a single Iron Head. Pupizard comes out, so Link sends in Sky Octorok to Hydro Pump it for an Oko. Clefpen is her next Pokemon, which goes down to a couple of Hydro Pumps from Sky Octorok. Her final Pokemon is Gogros, and with a couple of Iron Heads, Link wins another gift. Oh, that's why the layout was weird. The next mini boss is Bruno, the fighting type specialist. He opens with Lukakon, so after Guardian Deity sets up its stealth rocks, it goes for two nasty plots before using Psychic to take it out. Mr. Ape is up next, and Link uses Midna, who eventually takes it out with Shadow Claws. Bruno then sends out Hitmonlosion against Link's Sky Octorok. In a simple process of flipping between Strength Sap and Surf, it eventually goes down. Jirachoke, a menacing genie fusion, comes in and takes itself out with Healing Wish. This leaves Bruno with one final Pokemon in Mismalade, who is taken out by Sky Octorok's Shadow Balls. With that final hit, Link has another Elite Four gift. The third mini boss is Agatha, the Dark type specialist. She opens with a Hydreebi. Guardian Deity does its usual stealth rocks before switching into Varudania, who gets a nice crit Leaf Blade to take it out. Luxol comes out next, so Link uses Ganon to get an Earthquake backed by a Quick Claw proc to Oko. The incoming Delirai also gets Oko'd, but this time by Ganon's Iron Head. Munchrai comes to Belly Drum only to get Oko'd by Ganon's Sacred Sword, and Umtails, her final Pokemon, also gets Oko'd this time from Ganon's Earthquake. Wow, Ganon is a final boss for a reason, huh? Anyways, this secured Link his third Elite Four game. Now for the final mini-boss before Link's final challenge. Lance, the second fighting type Elite Four? He sends in Hitmonwhack first against Guardian Deity yet again. It does its standard stealth rocks and is able to take it out with a couple of psychics. Volkip is next, so Link uses Sky Octorok to flip between Strength Sap and Surf to take it out slowly but steadily. Link uses Midna against the unfortunately named Fusion, and is able to burn it and get a Shadow Claw off before needing to swap back out into Sky Octorok, who was able to take a hit and let it get finished off by burn. Link stayed in with Sky Octorok against the Arcolade to eventually take it out with Surf, and his final Pokemon is Chanakin, which takes Sky Octorok a while to defeat since the other Pokemon were not suitable or low HP, and it ran out of PP on Surf. 
but eventually it was finished off, securing Link his final Elite Four game. As Link approaches his final test, he knows that it's time to take down Navi one last time, so she can give him the Pokemon with the Ocarina to send him back home. She sends out Shandislash first, so Guardian Deity does its usual job before switching into Fursona, who used Nasty Plot and Flamethrower to take out the incoming Ferrapress. Persona was also able to take out the Ms. Mapparis in a single flamethrower, but was taken out by her starter, Swampfire. Link decides to use Varudania to spam Leaf Blades to burn through Navi's annoying full restore spam. Next comes Vilosion, so Link tries to power gem with Guardian Deity, but it gets taken out by a Petal Blizzard first. Sky Octorok also suffers the same fate and goes down. Varudania comes in though to finish it with a couple of Earthquakes thanks to the Petal Blizzard confusion. Shandislash comes in next and tanks an Earthquake from Ganon to take it out with Flame Burst. Varudania is able to get one last Earthquake off on her final Pokemon, Porizone before going down. And now the fate of the battle, and the fate of Link himself, is now in Midna's hands. And with one final low sweep from Midna, Link has come out victorious. As per the world's tradition, Link's team gets registered, and he wakes up in a room. Opening up his inventory, one last fusion begins, and as promised, Navi has a word to him with Dialbi, the Ocarina Pokemon. He steps outside, and without hesitation, he has the Pokemon send him home. Wait a second. Something's not right here. Well, excuse Princess. You could talk this entire time?